praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice in you, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to your people. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that you are still on the throne through all the events that are happening today. We ask Holy Spirit that you will give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour to all those who are watching around the world, that you will bring understanding to the things that are happening in the world and that you will grant your people peace in Jesus' name. Hello, God bless you, beloved. My name is Janine Fonts and I'm giving a prophetic update of current events and how they relate to Bible prophecy today. Well, beloved, it's good to see you again. We have not done a prophetic outlook for quite a while. I have been uh, on a 40 day fast at the beginning of the year, which our ministry does every year. And I've been waiting on the Lord before I did a prophetic update, reviewing the dreams and visions he gave me in 2021 and the new ones I've been getting in 22. Everything is converging. The dreams I had from last year to this year with current events. And now I have a full bird's eye view of what's happening. I know exactly where I am in my dreams, in the timeline of God. And it's now time to declare to you what I believe the spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour to the church. Amen. That we can be prepared for the Lord's coming. Well, we know we're on the precipice of World War III. We have a war event that is stirring up with the Ukraine, United States, NATO, European Union, and other countries getting involved. Beloved, uh, there is a caution first that the Holy Spirit put in my heart for the body of Christ. That caution is that we should not be nationalists, but we should be kingdom activists. I'm going to say that again. We should not have the perspective of a nationalist, but a kingdom activist. You know, the Bible says that we're all passing through. We're strangers in this world and we're passing through. If you are a born again Christian or if you are Christian, we belong to a higher kingdom, the kingdom of God. Furthermore, the Bible declares that we are ambassadors of the kingdom. An ambassador is someone who's sent from another nation to be an intermediator from that nation into another nation and to colonize that nation. In other words, we're the salt, we're to uh, be the light, and we're to bring the laws of the kingdom of God into this nation as it is in heaven. So let it be done in earth in Matthew chapter six. We are to bring God's kingdom on the earth today, okay? As far as it relates to the timeline, there's a beginning point and then there's an ending point. There's a time when God says, time is up, I'm pulling my church out, and we're going to enter the 70th week of Daniel. We're going to come into a time of Jacob's trouble. And at that time, I am going to declare a time of war. That's the seven-year tribulation, a time of judgments. It's actually God's judgments on the earth. Don't forget, it's not man's judgments. It's not the Antichrist who's reigning, which is the focus of the seven-year tribulation. But it's God judging the nations of the world, God judging the people of the world, those who have not chosen him, called on him, and those sheep and uh, goat nations being judged, the goat nations being judged in the wine press of God's wrath during the seven year tribulation. So the perspective for a kingdom activist is that God is in control. God is intervening in the kingdom of men. God is allowing these things to happen for his divine purposes. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is the God of warfare. He is a God of judgment. And we have to look at these events to see what the Lord is doing in the kingdom. Now, when we look at the Ukraine war, we see that there's a setup coming. There is a convergence of nations that the same nations that are listed in Ezekiel chapter 38. We're getting close to the Ezekiel 38 war. It's a preparation. It's a springboard to the Ezekiel 38 war where Gog, the Bible says, which is Russia, shall come against Israel and bring a confederation of nations with him. So what we recognize is that Gog, the bear, has risen up. He's been provoked by America. He's been provoked by the European Union. He's rising up now. And we also know in the book of Daniel that the Bible declares that the bear is going to take three ribs. He, he comes to devour flesh. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing prophecy being unveiled. We're seeing prophecy before our eyes unfolding in this dramatic end time revelation event. We're seeing revelation and Daniel being played out before our very eyes. This is how we have to look at it. And God is judging the nations. Okay. So what is happening also 
in the Ukraine. It's not only that Russia is rising up, becoming stronger so that she can be positioned to bring a confederation against Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble, but we also see the hunters have come. What do I mean by the hunters? The Bible says that God is going to bring the fishers upon his people, and that was the Gentiles to Israel to bring them from the nations, to bring them back to the land of Israel. But now we're entering a time of judgment where God, through war, is bringing out his people, the Jewish people, from around the world. They're coming out of Russia in the hunt, the thousands. They're coming out of some of the other countries in the thousands because it's time to go back to Israel, back to the land of Israel, because the Lord, he will be king, be crowned king of king. He will reveal himself to his brothers. And it, he wants all of the Jews back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. So we're seeing an exodus now of Jews from America, Jews from Russia, Jews from Poland and surrounding areas. They're leaving because of persecution. That is the hunters coming. Okay. And so this is still fulfilling Bible prophecy. That's why I said we should not be a nationalist. We should not be loyal to any nation because the Bible says that all of our righteousness is filthy rags. All the nations have blood on their hands. All the nations are being judged. There's not one pure nation. We know that God will defend Israel, but he also will chastise Israel in the mix. And what is really happening is not, it's not about a war here, a war there, or, you know, oh, a surprise attack here. No, this has been planned from the, a long time. This is the, the emerging uh, the phoenix out of the ashes, the new world order. This is the emerging of a new antichrist system where soon that lawless man, the antichrist, will come on the scene. But there has to be destruction first so that people will cry out for a new leader. They'll cry out and give away their freedoms. And that's what's happening. This is a depopulation agenda. This is what these wars are. And all of the kings of the earth, the Bible says in Revelations, are a part of it. So we should not be loyal to one nation. This is the world converging for a new world order, coming together for a global union, a global unity, a global religion, and, um, and also going to crown one man to lead that we're to populating the earth to take away the sovereignty of the many to give it to the specialized few. It's also a, a time, a, a time of great trial of Jacob's trouble coming upon the nations of the earth as humanity is demoralized. Humanity is destroyed during this time. Also still the judgments of the Lord on the earth today. Okay. And so the only savior, the only hope is Jesus Christ. We cannot have hope in America, hope in the European Union, hope in NATO, hope in Russia. No, we have to have hope in Jesus. It's all about his kingdom and his kingdom is coming. Hallelujah. And this is preparing for the wine press of the great wrath of God. The day of judgment is coming. But the good news is that before the seven year tribulation comes, before the antichrist comes on the scene, before World War III, the bride of Christ has to be taken out first. Hallelujah. The Lord said, thank you, Jesus, that he is taking his bride out. Amen. He has not suffered us to suffer wrath. And the wrath of God is those seven years. That's a time of wrath. And God has not suffered his bride to suffer wrath. He said he's going to hide us in Isaiah chapter 26 from that day. He says, come into your chambers and hide yourself for a little while to the time of indignation be passed. For the Lord is, he's going to rise up, hallelujah, to judge the nations. And so we have to recognize that the coming of the Lord is imminent. It can be any second. It can be any day. It can be in the next few months. But I truly believe that it is this year. Now, I want to go back and focus on a few dreams God gave me last year that are still coming back to my spirit last year in 2021. Exactly a few weeks from now, last year, the Lord gave me a dream in the beginning of April and the Lord Jesus himself called me on the phone. Hallelujah. I heard his voice and he said, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. And I began to declare that word. I ran into the living room with a whole bunch of people in a home group in the dream. And I told them Jesus is coming and no one believed Jesus was coming and everyone kept talking and everything. And my assignment was to get people out of the house, to get people basically just like the parable of the, the ten virgins, they had to get out of the house to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom goes, that's that's the, the Hebrew tradition of marriage. The bride goes out of her chamber. She goes out of her house to meet her bridegroom. She goes out into the night. Hallelujah. Her bridegroom meets her out there. Okay. And she's, she's taken up in a hoopah and on that big, you know, a wedding chair and she's lifted up in the air and that it represents the bridegroom coming down into the air coming to get his bride in the middle of the night 
their light so she can see through the night to get to her bridegroom. This is where we are now. And the Lord said last year in, in April, before I posted this dream, that the bridegroom comes to go out to meet him. And I thought when the Lord said it's a cycle, I thought it was three to six months. But I recognize that a true cycle is not only three, six months, but a true cycle begins at a year. Beloved, do you realize that in a few weeks from now, it will be one year from the time the Lord gave me that dream. And I've been waking up in the middle of the night with the Lord saying, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. And I've been recognizing, oh my goodness, I was too early. It's a year cycle. And this is the season that we need to be looking for the return of Jesus with the confirmation of world events aligning with this truth, world events confirming, hallelujah, with the threat of Russia saying, if any nations get involved with helping Ukraine furnish weapons to defend themselves, that we are going to nuke them. I mean, we are never been, we've never been so close to nuclear war as ever before. And all of these different events I have dreams from. And I want to tell you that we are going to do next week a special dream series of dreams the Lord has given me and a timeline for them and a convergence. Will you see a convergence with current events, with the dreams God gave me one year, two years ago, some of these dreams have had over a thousand some views that have gone viral around the world. The Lord has given me these dreams sometime 20 years ago, and I see them that this is the season. This is the time right before the coming of the Lord. So we need to be alert. Hallelujah. God confirms his word with signs following. So in view of that, seeing this Ukraine war, it is a warning. It is a sound the alarm that we need to be prepared for the bridegroom's coming. The tribulation period cannot come. And World War III cannot come, hallelujah, until the Lord takes his bride out first. You, we're going to be seeing several things happening. Number one, we're going to see a worldwide earthquake. Number two, we're going to see nuclear vent in America. We're going to be seeing America hit by Russia and Iran through submarine attack on America, uh, hitting Babylon, that great city, New York City, and, and uh, around America. We're going to see uh, some attacks some EMPs and things of that nature. And one of those days, or maybe the first day of that great nuclear attack, one of those days when that worldwide earthquake hits, those nukes begin to fall, it's going to be the day of the Lord. It's the day the bride is taken out on that same day. The Bible says, same day Noah went into the ark, the rain fell. The same day Lot went out of Sodom. That is when the fire fell. And this is what the Lord is saying today. The same day the seven-year tribulation starts, that is the same day he takes the bride out. He's a last minute God, but he's a God who's always on time. So we are looking every day for our bridegroom to come. And he was quickening me about that. The one other dream I want to give you very quickly as we close this broadcast is one that I received just this week. I want to tell this one because we're going to go extensively into some of the other dreams about what the Lord showed me. But in this dream, I found myself in a lookout glass house a lookout chamber. You, you know when it's presidential time, when it's time for a new president to be sworn in, he's won the election. And what do they do? They parade him through the streets the day he's been made president. And there's a big parade. And the president with his family, his cabinet, all of his closest friends, they go into a lookout shelter. This lookout shelter is above the earth, highly lifted up on some very strong pillars. It's all solid glass. And in that lookout chamber, he looks down on the parade and all the people who are waving him after you know, he's been through and been waving. He is now in a very safety, bulletproof glass shelter where he begins to look on the events. In this dream last week, I saw the angels were building me a lookout chamber. It was finished. The glass was already there. It was a very, very large lookout chamber where I would say the whole body of Christ could have gathered. It was miles why? And I was putting in last minute things because I was so excited. I was getting ready to move into my new house, which was a lookout chamber. It didn't have any furniture at the time, but that was just the place that the outside shell of it where the glass was, was a place that I was going to be looking out. And I knew that the tribulation was getting ready to start. And I was going to be looking out through the lookout glass at the events on the earth, but I was going to be highly lifted up. And in this dream, I was miles and miles above the earth in a very clear glass safety structure. We saw some other people building a house. Their, their lookout structure was done. And then I woke up and the Lord spoke to me as I woke up out of the dream. And he said, the bride of Christ is getting ready to be taken into the lookout shelter of heaven. And she is going to join the cloud of great witnesses as she looks down on the earth for the last week of Daniel, the last seven years, she's going to be delivered from the death, delivered 
from the trial. That's what the Bible says. He says, pray in that day that you will be de delivered. Hallelujah. From that day and that you'll be worthy to stand before the son of man. This bride who's ready, the bride that's prepared, the bride who has oil, the bride that's been living right, the, the bride who's obedient, the bride who loves Jesus, been walking in his will, walking in his commandments. Hallelujah. Ready when the bridegroom comes. Oh, that, that twinkling of an eye, that split second, that bride is given to be taken into that lookout chamber, hallelujah, in heaven. And she's going to be looking down on the earth at the events that are happening on the world scene for the seven year tribulation. That's how close we are. Any day, any moment. And so with that, are you ready? Are you ready to meet the bridegroom? Well, if you're not, there's still time. And today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. And beloved, today, if you're not ready to meet Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart. It's not natural preparation that will save us. It's the preparation of the spirit. It's the preparation to know that you're right with God. And the only way to be right with God is to accept that blood sacrifice that he made for you and me on Calvary. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is like filthy rags, but he when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Thank God he died for me. When I wasn't thinking of him, he already made an atonement for me. And he was the perfect lamb that was shed for me. And we can receive his righteousness, his righteous life, his holiness, his forgiveness, his mercy, and his love. Hallelujah. We can receive it when we accept the price that he paid for us. He died for us on that cross in Isaiah 53. And by his stripes were healed and made whole. He took all of our sins on his body. He took our sicknesses. He took our shame. He took our pain. And he took your iniquities on that tree. And now, just by faith in what the work that he did on the cross, you and I can receive forgiveness and eternal life. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I admit today that I am not ready for the times ahead. I admit today that I'm a sinner and I do not know you. I'm not prepared when the bridegroom comes, but I want to be. I want eternal life. I want to spend eternal life with you in heaven, and I want my sins to be washed away. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. I believe you died on the cross for me and you rose from the dead, that you are the Son of God. Now I open the door to my heart, and I invite you to come in. Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Be my best friend. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. And make every day that I live on this earth count for you, Lord Jesus. Use me for your glory in these last days. I'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And by faith, according to your word, I thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for saving me, Jesus. I believe today. My name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and that I am forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer for me, the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our transgressions from us. Thank you, Lord. I believe that when I see you in heaven one day, hallelujah, it's going to be because of this prayer you prayed today, that you'll be there when trumpets sound. The angels will come for you, and in the twinkling of an eye, you'll be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. I also believe, hallelujah, that today the Holy Spirit has shed his presence in your heart. That today there's been a change. Today there's been a release of shame, of pain. Today he's filled your heart with his love. Today that you know that there's been an internal change, that you're not the same anymore. You pass from death to life as you feel the precious Holy Spirit, fill your heart. As you feel that peace that passes all understanding, today there's an assurance that your sins have been washed away. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you please send us an email and say, Janine, I prayed that prayer with you. Amen. Go tell somebody what God has done for you. Tell everybody you know and say, I gave my life to Jesus today. Because the Bible says that we have to confess him. Amen. So you tell somebody, Jesus died for me on the cross. I'm not ashamed. So we're not ashamed to tell somebody what
Christ has done for us. And don't you be ashamed to tell somebody, I prayed that prayer today. I gave my life to Jesus. He died for me on the cross naked. He was not ashamed to die for me. And I'm not ashamed to tell somebody that I have been forgiven and my sins have been washed away. That today I am a child of God. You can start by sending us an email and letting us know that you prayed that prayer. Well, beloved, I want to encourage you. Do not want to miss Eagle's Eyes. We have a broadcast coming up called Eagle's Eyes. And in Eagle's Eyes, we're going to go over and dramatize some of the dreams that I had of a timeline of what we're about to see and what the Lord has confirmed so that we know when the trumpet is about to sound. Tell somebody about this broadcast. God bless you. Shalom. Bye.